Welcome to the lecture series under the ages of e Shikshana program and initiative by VTU Karnataka. This is Professor Umar Rao bringing you the lecture series on transmission and distribution. So, in my last session, we solved a number of problems in the distributor where we have loads, concentrated loads at different points and we specified the power factor of the load with respect to the receiving end voltage and solved some problems for the drop in the various sections for the sending end voltage, sending end power factor etcetera. So, in this session let us continue with the numericals we did in the last session. So, now let us consider an example. So, I have a single phase distributor with an impedance of 0.1 plus j 0 0.15 ohms per conductor. At the far end the voltage V b is equal to 200 volts and the current is 100 amps at 0 0.8 pf lag. At the midpoint I have a load drawing 100 amperes at a power factor of 0.8 lag with respect to the voltage of the midpoint. Calculate the midpoint voltage that is the problem. So, you see here I have a distributor again let us just recap the difference between the distributor and the feeder. The feeder normally does not have tappings whereas, the distributor has tappings in between. But I told you in the previous session that you can very commonly they interchange the two words. Okay. So, I have a line and it is 200 volts. So, you can see here midpoint is m and it is given this is 500 meters and this is 500 meters and the receiving end voltage this is 200 volts V b and there is a current of 100 amperes 0.8 pf lag and similarly here I have a current of 100 amperes 0.6 lag, but now it is not with respect to V b it is with respect to V m. As we discussed this is more common because the equipment power factor is on the rating of the voltage of across the equipment. So, when you have a motor let us say I have a 5000 HP motor and I say the power factor is 0.82 that means, the motor will draw a current lagging the voltage at a power factor of 0.82. So, this is a more meaningful data. So, now I have to calculate the midpoint voltage. So, total impedance of the distributor is 2 into 0.1 plus j. So, why did I multiply by 2? If you look at the data, it says it is a single phase distributor and the impedance is 0.1 plus j 0.15 ohms per conductor. So, in a single phase system you have to take the loop. So, if this per conductor were not mentioned, you can assume that it is a single phase taken out from the three phase system. Okay. But since it says per conductor that means, it is a single phase system itself with two wires and this is the impedance of each wire, each conductor. So, that is why it is multiplied by 2. Now, impedance of section A m, so this is the entire distributor. So, of section A m is 0.1 plus j point half because I have a load at the midpoint. I have a load at the midpoint. So, now let us take the receiving end voltage that is the voltage at point B as the reference. The receiving end voltage is the reference. So, that is equal to 200 plus J 0 that is the meaning of reference. Reference means that phasor quantity is 
at an angle of 0. So, vector is only for drawing, but the correct word is phasor. Okay. It is phasor. Though all the phasors we represent by vector diagram, it a, is a phasor. Phasor means what? Phasor is a representation of a sinusoidally varying quantity. Okay. Whereas, a vector is a spatial quantity. Vector is a spatial quantity. Are you clear? So, phasors and vectors, though we solve them with the same mathematics using vector diagrams, they are two entirely different things physically. For example, if you say I have a force of 10 at an angle of 30 degrees, that means if this is my reference, then I have a force actually acting at 30 degrees in space. Okay. But if I say I have a conductor carrying a current of 10 at an angle of 30 degrees, I do not mind, I do not mean that the conductor is aligned at 30 degrees, no. What do, what do I mean? I mean that the current is current through the conductor is sinusoidal and has an RMS value of 10, normally we represent the RMS values and it is at an angle of time phase angle at an angle of 30 degrees with respect to some re reference phasor. So, be very clear phasors are not vectors. Okay. Next, the load current at point B, if you see here, this is with respect to VB, with respect to VB, 0.8 lag with respect to VB. So, the load current will be 100.8 minus J. So, this is with respect to VB. Clear? Now, let us take the section MB. So, the current flowing through this section is this current I2. Clear? Fine. The current in section MB is I2 is equal to 80 minus J. 60, 80 minus J 60. Therefore, V M B the drop, the drop in the distributor sector M B is the current through it into the impedance. So, this is the current that is the current I 2, this is the impedance. So, V M is simply 217 plus J 6 that is all. This is the midpoint voltage. Now, a single phase AC distributor 500 meters long has an impedance of 0 0.02 plus J 0 0.04 ohms and is fed from one end at 250 volts. The loads are as follows, 50 amperes at UPF 200 meters from feeding point and 100 amperes at 0.8 PF lag 300 meters from feeding point and 50 amperes at 0.6 PF lag at the far end. Calculate the voltage at the far end, state any assumptions made. So, first let us draw the network. So, I have point A, it is totally AB is the length, it is 500. So, at 200 meters I have 50 amps, at the next 100 meters I have 100 amps and then again at the far end I have 50 amps. The figure is fairly easy to draw. Now, where is the question of assumption? Where is the question of assumption? Right. So, the data missing here is this P f that is the angle, current angle is with respect to which voltage that is not mentioned. So, you can solve the problem by assuming that these power factors UPF 0.8 lag, 0.6 lag is with, with respect to the respective voltage buses or with respect to the receiving end or with respect to the sending end. Okay. Now, I have solved it by assuming the PFs are all with respect to the receiving, you know, with respect to the feeding end, that is the sending end. So, let us see what to do. That is simpler for me because I know the sending end voltage, that is all. 
So, the current in section A D, the first section, the current in this section would be the sum of all these three currents, right? It would be this plus this plus this. So, it is 50 at U P F, 100 at point 8 P F and 50 at point 6 P F. Again, just see here. So, this current source current is sum of this current, this and this here. So, that is equal to 160 minus J 100. So, now you see why very smartly I took the sending end as the reference because I know the sending end voltage, it is easy for me to calculate. Okay. Now, the impedance of the section A D, A D is 200 meters, you are given the total impedance. In this case, the total impedance is given, so you do not have to multiply by 2. You have to multiply it by 2 only if it is mentioned per conductor, a single phase system and this is the impedance per conductor means they have taken only half of the resistance, so multiply by 2. If that is not mentioned, either it is a single phase system with the total loop resistance and reactance or it is a single phase system taken out from the three phase system. Right. So, the impedance is the total this is the total impedance of 500 meters. So, section A D is 200 meters. So, into 200 by 500 into 200 by 500 that is the impedance of section A D. Now, the voltage drop in A D will be what the current through it that is the total current into the impedance. So, this is the drop. Okay. Now, okay. so I found the drop in A D, this is the drop. See, mark the polarity so that you write correctly. Now, what is the current here in section D C? I know the total current in A D. So, out of the total current 50 amps at U P F flows out at point D. Therefore, the current in D C is the total current minus 50 amps at U P F. So, the current in D C is the total current minus 50 because it is U P F there is no imaginary part. So, this is the current in DC. Now, impedance of DC, DC is 100 meters. So, it will be one fifth of the total impedance. So, this is the impedance of DC. And the drop in DC or CD would be the current. So, sorry, this is 110. Current, this is the current minus the impedance sorry the current into the impedance. So, this is the drop in section D C. So, now the impedance of D C is this drop in C D is this next the current in C B. The current in C B would be the current in DC minus 100 amperes at point 8 lag. So, the current in CB is the total current or you can even do this. The current in CB would be nothing but this current, right? That is the current in CB. So, that is what is done here. 50 at point 6 PF lag. So, this is the current in C B and the impedance of C B is same as impedance of the first section because both are 200 meters and this is the drop in C B. So, what is the total drop? The total drop is voltage drop in A D plus D C plus C B. So, the total drop in C B I have. So, the total drop is the drop this is in the first section A D and this is in D C and this is in C B. 
So, this is the total voltage drop in the distributor. This is the total voltage drop in the distributor. Okay. Now, voltage at the far end would be the feeding end voltage minus the drop. So, its magnitude is 245 volts approximately. So, at the sending end it is 250, receiving end it is 245. Now, I suggest that you work this out by assuming the power factors are all refer to the receiving end voltage. So, you have to assume the receiving end voltage is V and all the power factors are with respect to V and you know the sending end voltage and from there you work and calculate what would be the receiving end voltage. And you will find that it is slightly more complicated if you assume these power factors are all with respect to the bus voltages. Okay. So, as an exercise I leave it to you to try both and find out what would be the difference. Now, let us take a ring main system. So, I have a three phase ring main A, B, C, D fed from the end A. So, here it is fed at 11 kV. fed from end A at 11 kV and supplies balanced loads of 20 amperes 0.9 PF at B, 40 amps 0.707 PF at C. If nothing is mentioned, always understand that the PF is lag and 30 amperes 0.8 PF lag at D. All the load currents are referred to the voltage at point A that means the sending end voltage. The impedance per phase of the various sections are given to you A B is 2 plus J 3 ohms, B C is 2 plus J 2 ohms and C D is 3 plus J 4 ohms and D A is 2 plus J 3 ohms. So, it is a ring main closed loop. Determine the current in various sections and the bus bar voltages at B, C and D. The bus bar voltages at B, C and D. So, this is a simple network. This is a simple network. It is a three phase system. So, all the values given will be per phase right and you have to solve for this. So, let us see how you do it. Okay. So, first let us assume take the section A B. Okay. I take the section A B, we start from there, simple solve it like how you would solve a network theory problem, how you would solve a circuit uh, in, in circuit theory, how you would solve it, just solve it that way. So, let us assume that the current in section A B is x plus j y amps, I start from there. So, you see here, so here I assume it is x plus j y current. So, that is the current entering this bus, right, the current entering that bus and this is a node, this bus is a node, you think of it as a node similar to a node in your circuit theory. So, this is entering and out of this current 20 amps 0.9 PF lag is drawn from that bus. So, if you want a circuit equivalent, it is like this. So, this is node B. Okay, node B and I have the current entering and I have the current leaving. So, now the current coming out here would be this the current entering minus the current leaving that is what we have done. So, it would be x plus j y minus 20 amps it is drawing at 0.9 p f 
Okay. So, the current in section B c is the current entering is x plus j y and the current leaving the node is 20 at an angle of 0.9 p f. So, I get the current in section B c now this is remember in rectangular coordinates. So, add the real components and add the imaginary components. So, I have x minus 18 plus j y plus 8.71 ok. Now, back to the figure. So, now I have found the current here, I have found the current here and so this current is drawn. So, the current here through this section would be the difference of these two that is what is done. So, the current in section C D is the current in B C minus the current drawn at node C. The current drawn is 40 at a P of, of 0 0.707 clear. So, I get this current, I get this current. Now, the current in section D A here. So, this is the current entering, this is the current leaving. So, the current here would be the current entering and it draws 30 amps at 0.8 pf. So, this is the current in section d a clear. So, now what do I know? I know the currents, I know the currents in all the sections, I know the currents in all the sections in terms of variables x and y, in terms of variables x and y. I also know the impedance of all the sections. I also know the impedance of all the sections. So, therefore, I can find the voltage drop in all the sections. So, the voltage drop in section A B, the current through A B is x plus j y into the impedance. Again you get everything in terms of x and y, x and y are the two unknowns. Similarly, the voltage drop in section B C is the current flowing through B C into the impedance. Likewise, the voltage drop in C D is the current through that into the impedance. Simple, put everything in rectangular coordinates. Okay. And voltage drop in section D A is the current through it into the impedance. Right. So, what do I know? I know all the drops, I know all the drops. Now, let us go back to this figure. So, you see here plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus. So, if I take this loop A B C D K V L must be satisfied. K V L must be satisfied, right. There are no sources in between, there are no sources in between. I do not have any voltage source. Therefore, the sum of all the drops applying K V L to A B C D loop V A B plus V B C plus V C D plus V D A must be equal to 0, that is K V L, right. I have already found the expressions for the all the drops. So, I equate it to 0. Now, when a complex number is equal to 0, what does it mean? The real part is 0 and the imaginary part has to be 0. It is a complex number, right? You get a you get an equation, complex equation. In terms of x, y, it is a complex equation. So, the imaginary part must independently be 0 and the real part also must be independently 0. Only then the sum of the two can be equal to 0, right. Therefore, the real part is 9 x minus 12 y minus 645.75 is 0. This is the real part and the imaginary part 12 x plus 9 y minus 193.59 is equal to 0. What do I have now? I have two algebraic equations in two unknowns x and y. 
So, I solve for x and y simple right you solve for x and y. So, on solving I get x and y I do not have to tell you how to solve it is a high school or maybe nowadays it is even primary school mathematics solving two algebraic equations for two variables. So, once I know x and y the current through I a b is x plus j y this minus is because y itself is negative it is x plus j y, but y is negative. So, I got 36.15 minus j 26.69 and you have expressions for current in all the sections. So, you see here current in section b c c d d a you have expressions for that in terms of x and y. So, you calculate the current in all the sections you calculate the current in all the sections done I got the answer I got the current in all the sections. Now, the supply voltage at A V A is 11 by root 3 why did I divide by root 3? Why did I divide by root 3? Because it is a three phase system it is a three phase system that is what is mentioned at the beginning. So, whenever we talk of a three phase system the voltage specified is the line to line voltage. So, I divide by root 3 ok. So, I get 6.35 kV. Now, I take V A as the reference. So, now see here let us go back to the network. Now, what do I know in this network? I know all the currents. I know all the currents and I know the sending end voltage. Sending end voltage is 11 by root 3 right. So, what will be the voltage at node B? it will be voltage at node A V A minus drop in A B. I also know the drops I have calculated all the drops ok. So, we will make use of that simple. So, voltage at station B or node B or bus bar B all mean the same is V A minus I A B into Z B. So, it is 6198 at an angle of minus 0 0.508 degree volts. That angle is with respect to what? With respect to V A the voltage at the feeding point. Similarly, the voltage at C V C would be V B minus next section. So, you just keep proceeding. So, always the next the next voltage would be the this node minus this. Similarly, the V D would be V C minus the drop in C D. So, you can just do it. So, that is what is done here. So, V C is V B minus this is the drop in C D. So, again I have 6126 at an angle of minus 0.5172. So, you see here compare it with V B. V B is 6198. V C is 6126 slightly lesser and V D is V C minus I C D Z C again it is 6197. 6197. So, in a loop when in a radial system what happens if you take a ra radial system as you move along you know the voltage will be continuously dropping because the current is flowing only in one direction. Whereas, in a loop do not think that you know in this for example, in this particular problem V B is less than V A, V C should be less than V B, V D should be less than V C no you saw here V B is less than V A, V C is less than V B, but again V D it has increased. Because when I feed from one end actually this is how it goes right and I have no buses in between. So, depending on how the interconnection is there will be some node voltages which will again after dropping in a particular loop it will again go up. So, that is what has happened in this case. So, V C is 6126, but V D is 6197. So, that is how you solve for a ring main. So, we have seen a number of examples.
and I am sure you will be in a position to solve for any problem on distribution with this background. Okay. Now, while we were discussing different wires, we discussed two wire scheme for single phase and three wire and four wire for three phase. So, in, in three phase in a four wire system the fourth wire is the neutral wire, the fourth wire is the neutral wire. What happens it will carry any unbalanced current. So, the neutral current is I r plus I y plus I b. So, when the system is perfectly balanced the sum will be equal to 0. Whenever there is an imbalance, imbalance could be because of a fault or imbalance could be that you know a lightning has struck and then some load on phase B is removed, it could be that. Or it could just be that while planning I have distributed the load equally, but all the loads do not switch on at the same time. So, there is some imbalance. So, there will be some neutral current flowing which is equal to the sum of the currents. So, four wire systems always have a neutral conductor. In the absence of a neutral conductor what happens? In the absence of a neutral conductor, one phase will form the return path for the currents through the other phases because of the phase displacement. And that is also the reason why the sum of the currents add up to 0 in a balanced system. So, this neutral current normally it will carry lesser current because the unbalance is less. The system unbalance will not be too high a percentage. So, the neutral points of generators, transformers and loads are all normally grounded giving a common reference. So, you would find how do I represent that normally if it is a generator star connected generator. Okay. If it is a delta star transformer, if I draw like this means the star is not grounded. If we draw like this the star point or the neutral point is grounded. A neutral wire also allows the three phase system to use a higher voltage while still supporting lower voltage for single phase appliances. So, you can have you have line to line voltage. So, you can draw equipment you can connect at a higher voltage and you can also connect between line and neutral you can also connect three phase loads. So, you have a number of possibilities if you have the neutral wire. Now, what happens if the neutral wire breaks? It is called as a broken neutral or a disconnected neutral. So, if the neutral conductor is opened say at the source side of the distribution transformer or the generator or at the load side, then the reference point will float. That means, the voltage of the neutral point will keep shifting. The voltage of the neutral point will, will keep shifting because if you take a system just this. Okay. And let us say you have connected it to a supply three phase supply, then under balanced condition these all these three voltages will be the same the line to neutral voltage whether you take a neutral wire or not. Okay. If not then this neutral voltage will not be a constant you can solve for it using Milman's theorem. I am sure in network theory you might have solved for such problems using Milman's theorem you can find out what is the neutral voltage. So, this condition causes the voltages to float to the maximum of its phase voltage relative to ground it can go up to the neutral voltage can go up to the phase voltage where the system can become heavily unbalanced. So, this can have a very severe impact on the system and it will depend on the type of supply you have what sort of an installation and how you have done balancing in the distribution system and so on. So, it is always important to prevent the occurrence of 
floating neutrals or broken neutrals. When the star point of unbalanced load remains disconnected with respect to the star point of the power source, it leads to unequal voltages across each phase which also varies according to the load. See what we normally do is, see this is the supply and say this is the load. This is load and this is supply. We do a connection like this. The supply is balanced because my generators are balanced, transmission lines are balanced, supply side is balanced. So, now I connect this neutral to this neutral. When I connect the neutral, what happens? The supply voltage is balanced. So, all the three phases here will get the line to neutral, will get a balanced supply, will get a balanced supply. Okay. So, let us assume this is a motor, this is a motor and maybe winding in one of the phases there is a short circuit. So, the load is unbalanced, the load is unbalanced, but the voltage supply will be balanced because I have, I have connected these two neutrals. So, once you connect these two neutrals, the current here will be small. So, this voltages will be by root 3 times the line to line voltage. But if this gets disconnected, then here I will have on the supply side I have a balanced supply, but on the load side this neutral voltage will keep shifting. This neutral voltage will keep shifting and the phase voltages automatically will be different. When the neutral voltage changes, R to n, Y to n, B to n will be different. So, as the voltage of a separated star point or neutral varies and it is floating, you will have unequal voltages across the phases. So, when the neutral is disconnected and the neutral voltage will also go up, which can become dangerous for the equipment and people working on the load side who are operating the equipment. So, we have to be careful, we have to avoid this. So, you see here, I have a healthy power system. This is a healthy power system. Just see how it is. This is my source. This is my source. So, here I have 440 volts line to line, 230 volts line to neutral. Okay. So, I have connected single phase load between R and N. So, this is your neutral wire. Can you see this is the neutral wire? So, between R and N, I have a single phase load. Between Y and N, I have another load and between B, B and N, I have another load. So, I have three single phase loads and I have a three phase load here. This is connected to R, Y and B. This is connected to B and N. This is N and this is connected to Y and N. This is connected to R and N. I can do such a connection perfectly viable okay? because the neutral is grounded. So, the neutral potential is less than 3 volts that is the neutral to ground potential almost at 0, 0 voltage. So, this is a healthy system, this is a healthy system. Now what happens, now what happens in a floating neutral condition, so just see here this neutral has become open, the neutral has become open, right. So now I have the neutral potential goes up, so it is 110 volts. So each of these phases, each of these will have different voltages and that is not acceptable. So, you will not have line to line voltage will still be 440 volts. So, equipment connected line to line there will not be a problem, but with equipment connected on single phase then you have an issue because see here what happens here this, this part is disconnected. So, from here from R it goes through this through the neutral and you just see the path it how it is closed.
So, from here it can divide here so on. So, the potentials across these loads will not be the same. The potentials across the three loads will not be the same. The three phase load may run properly because it is not affected by the neutral voltage and the by disconnecting the neutral I have no issue with the line to line voltages that is still maintained at 440 volts. But the single phase volts the voltage will go down in one of the phases and the voltage will go up in some phases and this can damage the equipment. So, floating neutrals should always be avoided. So, what are the factors for first of all which lead to such a floating neutral? The use of line tap on transformer bushing is the main reason for neutral conductor failure. What happens? In this case the nut on the line tap gets detached because of vibrations and temperature variations resulting in hot connections and due to this the conductor starts melting and results in disconnected neutral. This is one of the main reasons. This may damage the equipment connected to the supply side also. Next detached overhead neutral conductor something may have fallen on the neutral conductor and it snaps. So, this causes the supply voltage to float up on the line voltage instead of the phase voltage. This leads to damage of the customer equipment. The other causes detached service neutral conductor that is on the service side the neutral conductor comes off, but it, it can result in loss of supply to the consumer because the consumer loads are connected between line and neutral. High earth resistance. So, I showed in the figure that the neutral to ground voltage is 3 volts. So, minimum value of earth resistance of neutral provides low resistance path for neutral current. Whereas, if the earth resistance is high then there is no path for the neutral current. So, you I think you know whenever they do grounding they put salt and they put solid copper plates or conductors and do a solid grounding. This is the reason ok. If the value is limited that means, the ground resistance is minimized then it will allow sufficient fault current through flow through the neutral to the ground and minimize neutral shifting. Distribution system overloading. So, overloading may cause improper distribution in the three phases improper distribution in the three phases which may lead to heavy neutral currents and the neutral conductor may fail. So, we should properly design the neutral conductor so that minimum current will flow through it. The entire distribution system should be designed to take this into cognizance. Sometimes maintenance for maintenance on the low voltage side they may have detached operators may have detached the neutral conductor and then loosely connected it or maybe forgotten to connect it. So, this can also cause a floating neutral. So, what you have to realize is a floating neutral either on the supply side or on the load side service side can create issues and must be avoided ok. We have to take into account proper conditions. So, how can I prevent the disconnection of the neutral wire? So, we use a 4 pole breaker normally 3 poles you have for the 3 lines you have a fourth one for the neutral or we have what are called as ELCBs earth leakage circuit breakers if the leakage current from neutral to ground is heavy means there is something wrong or residual circuit breaker connections. So, all these 3 will protect the system. So, these circuit breakers will cut off the supply when the neutral opens. We can use voltage stabilizers for critical equipment ok. So, we are all used to it we use voltage stabilizers with our computers with TVs refrigerators. So, this can also help to protect and on the distribution side proper maintenance. So, we have to tighten the neutral wire so that loose nuts and bolts are not there 
and the operators and the service personnel must be trained to ensure proper maintenance. So, we saw quite a few things in the session and we next move on to another very important topic in power systems that is the reliability of the distribution system. So, if you look at the number of components, so the entire power system has generation, transmission and distribution. So, if you look at the number of components, the number of components are large in the distribution system, clear? because all the loads are connected at the distribution system. So, and the variety is huge and you might be using some DC loads and you would be converting AC to DC to charge it and then you have uh, lagging loads, lagging over different power factors, you have industries drawing power at different voltage levels. So, it is very, very complex the entire distribution system. So, generally whenever we talk of reliability in the power system. So, if you look at any content on reliability, a major focus is on the reliability of the distribution rather than on transmission and generation. And what do you mean by reliable for any product? So, if I say I have a mobile, my mobile is reliable, simple that means it does not break down. When I want to make a call, I can make a call, it is reliable, my network is reliable, right? My watch is reliable, that means it is functioning properly. One is it should function in as a condition for reliability, it should function and second is it should function properly. So, I will give you a very simple difference. I have a watch, my watch is functioning, it is running, but then it is not running on time, it is not showing me the correct time. So, it is not enough if it just runs, it should also show me the correct time, right? So, reliability includes the operation and the quality of the operation, how good it is, both are included in reliability. So, in the next sessions, we will see how we define reliability and what are the factors on which reliability depends in the distribution sector. Thank you.